Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm, I'm very happy to be back here uh, to give an update. Uh, let me see. Uh, update of the quantum computing research at Fujitsu. Uh, I'm Shintaro Sato from Fujitsu. Okay. Actually, Fujitsu uh, have been working on the computing technology for years, maybe more, more than for six, 60 years, um, uh, from the era of the mainframe. Um, actually, we have been working on the uh, computing technology since then. You know, the, we're still working on the uh, HPC technology. Actually, we, uh, work, uh, we developed the supercomputer K and Fugaku with Riken. And this FX10 and FX1000 uh, basically uh, use the same chip as K and Fugaku. Uh, we're still working on HPC, uh, but at the same time, you know, the, uh, the uh, improvement in computing performance actually is slowing down. So now people are uh, like uh, try to uh, develop that new architecture specialized for some specific application to speed up the computation. So in the same context, uh, we work on the uh, uh, new architecture. Actually, we developed what we call digital annealer, uh, which has an architecture specialized for the uh, community optimization problem. But anyway, but this technology still uses CMOS technology. So for future, we also work on the new computing compu technology. That is com content computing. And actually, last year, we uh, uh, released the uh, uh, platform called Computing as a Service. We actually tried to provide uh, our top class computing technology as a service to our customers. Actually, in the future, we try to uh, make it as an easy to use platform uh, so that uh, our customers don't have to worry about which com computing te technology they use. We'd like to use AI to, uh, you know, to, uh, to AI to choose the best computing resource for our customers. At this moment, the, uh, this, uh, this platform has a HPC and digital anita, but in the future, we try to put a quantum computer on this platform. And this slide actually explains the future strategy for quantum computing. Uh, we try to cover all the technology layers from device level, platform, software, and application, but not alone with the world leading uh, research institution like Riken and TU Delft in the Netherlands. And actually, we, uh, because we don't know the final solution for the hardware yet, so we basically try to put emphasis on software technology that, that may not depend on the hardware. For the hardware technology, uh, we try to work on the several type of uh, technologies. But because our resources are limited, at this moment, we uh, basically concentrate on the two technologies. One is the superconducting qubit technology with Riken, and the other is diamond spin qubit technology with TU Delft in Netherlands. But at the same time, we try to uh, look into the other uh, technologies. So uh, we, still, uh, we still have a conversation with the uh, like, uh, university and uh, uh, vendors with uh, different hardware technology. Okay. And, that, and also, the, we believe that application is very important. So we started, the, uh, uh, started to uh, collaborate with our customers to develop application using the, uh, our newly developed quantum simulator. Actually, uh, actually, two months ago, we uh, actually released the uh, uh, superconducting uh, 64 qubit superconducting quantum computer uh, from the uh, Riken uh, RQC Physics Collaboration Center we established about two and a half years ago, actually. Uh, it's uh, actually Japan's second domestic quantum computer. So we plan to develop uh, application with end users using this quantum computer, uh, mainly in the industry sectors. Let me explain a little bit about the uh, design of the uh, qubit chip. Actually, this qubit chip has a 3D contact structure. Uh, actually, interconnect is from the back. So uh, interconnect for the control of the qubit and the read of the qubit is from the back. So um, this is, that means we can scale up of the number of qubit without changing the design. That's a really good part of this uh, chip design. This is originally developed by Professor Nakamura at Riken. So, we plan to uh, scale up up to more than 1,000 qubit using the same design. Uh, actually, uh, I mentioned the quantum computer simulator. Actually, the, uh, we developed the uh, quantum computer simulator using our Fugaku superconducting uh, supercomputing technology last year. Uh, uh, first one is for the uh, for to simulate 36 qubit. Oops, sorry. Oops. 
uh, for the 30, 36 qubit, but it has been scaled up to the 40 qubit quantum computer simulator this July. So we uh, basically work with customers to develop application using this uh, large scale quantum computer simulator. We also had a, a, what we called quantum simulator challenge this year. We basically let the uh, research institution all over the world uh, use the uh, quantum computer simulator for free to develop application. It's like a contest. We are gonna give a first and second and third pri prizes for the uh, research in in institution who develop the good application using a quantum simulator. We are, not, we are not do that using our quantum computer in the future, okay. And, and actually our customer actually want to uh, simulate a uh, larger number of qubits. So we try to work on the uh, new type of simulator for larger scale simulations. Uh, we work on the tensor network simulator with the Barcelona Supercomputing Center, BSC. And also we work on the decision diagram simulator with the University of Tokyo, okay. Actually, uh, two months ago, we actually released the um, uh, 60, 64 qubit quantum com computer. But actually, not, not only that, but also we actually uh, released the, what they called hybrid quantum computing platform, consisting of the uh, 64 qubit uh, uh, superconducting quantum computer and the 40 qubit quantum simulator, okay. Uh, what we try to do uh, using this platform is actually the, um, Actually, first one is very easy uh, because uh, simulate, simulator don't have errors. So simulator doesn't have errors. So um, then we can check the result of the uh, result of the quantum computer. Okay, uh, quantum computer have a, still have uh, errors. So we can check the result of the quantum computer, and also the uh, we actually work on the error mitigation algorithm. So we can uh, check the performance of the error mitigation algorithm too. And another thing we wanna do using this hybrid platform is actually the, we try, we, uh, we want to uh, develop the uh, hybrid algorithm using quantum computer and simulator with our customers. Actually the uh, uh, VQE is a typical example, you know, the uh, people use the uh, uh, quantum computer and the HPC together. But we try to do uh, something beyond that. Actually the, uh, actually two months ago we demonstrated the, uh, like a simulation for the DMET, DMET simulation. Actually, the uh, molecule, large molecule is uh, actually make, uh, 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 made into fragment. So we did a, a simulation of the such fragment, energy state of such fragment using the quantum computer. But after the calculation fragment, we, uh, want, we have to combine all the result to uh, obtain the uh, total energy of the molecule. So for that, uh, for that last part, uh, that, uh, it is really sensitive to, to errors. So we use the quantum simulator for that part. So we try to develop, uh, divide even the uh, part of the uh, problem which should be done by the quantum computer into two or three, okay? That's what we're doing. So we are now working with the customer to develop new type of the algorithm using a quantum computer and quantum simulator. Okay, and the, uh, actually, as I said, we are, uh, we have been developing the, uh, we, we have been uh, working with our customers to develop application in uh, material science or drug discovery or finance field. Um, but uh, like a customer like physics film, Mitsubishi Chemical and Tokyo Electron and Mitsubishi uh, Financial Technology. But uh, from now on, we also want to try to use our quantum computer to develop application in the industrial, industrial field. Uh, let me a little bit talk about, also about diamond spin qubit technologies. Uh, uh, basically, the, uh, we try to use the uh, electron spin uh, formed at defect in diamond as a qubit. So actually, the, uh, around the such electron spin, there's a nuclear spin, uh, typically like a nuclear spin of C13, okay? So we use uh, electron spin and several nuclear spin as a one qubit module, okay? So, a uh, good thing about this, this technology is uh, quantum information can be sent by the photonic link, photonic interconnect by photons. So, uh, so by connecting the, these quantum module using a photonic interconnect, we, we think that we can easily scale up a, a quantum computing system, okay? And another, another good thing about this technology is as you may know, the uh, operation temperature is relatively high like a 4K, you know, compared, it's a much higher than the uh, 
temperature, operation temperature for the uh, superconductor qubit technology, which is typically, typically 10 milliseconds. So anyway, uh, we can uh, use a smaller fridge or we can use a more cooling, uh, larger cooling power okay, for this uh, uh, quantum computer. So in this sense, we think that it's easier to scale up using this technology. Even though it's really still at the early stage, we, we believe that this technology has a lot of potential. Okay? And another thing we try to do is using this technology is we try to integrate everything into one chip. So uh, to uh, connect a, a qubit module, we try to uh, prepare the waveguide on the chip. And also to control the qubit, uh, we try to put the control electronics uh, for the qubit on, also on the chip. So we try to do a 3D integration of everything. And also we try to develop the uh, error new error correction scheme for this uh, topology. You know, we can actually the, uh, change the topology of the, uh, change the connection topology connection topology of the qubit because we can use a photonic link. So, so anyway, we try to do, develop everything uh, for this technology, okay? And actually, uh, actually last year, uh, TU Delft actually demonstrated the uh, uh, four current operation of the logical qubit. Uh, but in this case, they used the uh, uh, qubit in one module. One module means uh, one electron spin and several nuclear spin. And they demonstrated the logical uh, uh, demonstrate, demonstrate the logical gate operation. Uh, but in the future, we try to uh, demonstrate the error collection technology using the multiple module. And also, the, for this technology, we actually uh, do a research from the material level. So actually, diamond spin is a typical example is a uh, uh, nitrogen vacancy, and be center. But now we actually try the uh, uh, tin vacancy because it has a better performance. So uh, we now try to demonstrate the uh, a similar thing using the uh, similar thing with the uh, NV center with the uh, team vacancy. Okay, um, and the uh, white panel is the example of the 3D integration. Uh, actually, this uh, picture shows that the example of the integration of the small diamond chip on the silicon nitride photonic circuit, okay? So uh, recently, you also demonstrated that 3D integration of the the uh, control electronics with the diamond chip. So anyway, uh, we actually plan to do a, a such a, a 3D integration using this technology. Uh, as I said, we uh, actually put emphasis on the software technology too. Actually, uh, we do a collaboration with the, uh, a Professor Emerson, uh, who originally fo founded the uh, quantum benchmark that is now as well absorbed by Keysight technology. So we now do a collaboration with Keysight technology for the error mitigation technology. Actually, rec recently we published a paper, one paper. Uh, we we show the uh, uh, error mitigation uh, using the uh, combination of the zero noise exploration and line noise comparing. As you know, the uh, zero noise extrapolation is a powerful method. But it's not really efficient for the, uh, like a coherent noise, like over rotation. So actually, uh, by using RC, a random compiling, we can turn the, uh, that kind of coherent noise into the stochastic noise. So by combining the, uh, these two technologies, we can uh, mitigate errors more effectively. Actually, on the next page, there's an example. Actually, we use the, uh, we use uh, this actually slide shows the new maker result using our new method, okay? So we apply our method to practical algorithm for quantum chemistry. Actually, we uh, do a VQE for the uh, calculating the ground state energy of the hydrogen molecules. And uh, actually, left panel shows the, uh, with, uh, actually, we intentionally added errors. We use our simulator. We intentionally added errors. And without error mitigation, it has some errors, but only random compiling or only ZNE didn't work. But by combining them, by, because we included uh, coherent errors in this simulation, so, but by combining them, we can, uh, you know, we can more effectively reduce the errors. So, in the, so we, now, in, in this case, we just uh, use our uh, method for the, uh, like, uh, quantum chemistry calculation. So we try to find uh, more, more application which 
to which we, our error method can be used. So we are on our way, okay? And actually, the, for us, uh, uh, error correction technology or for trying to contact computing is very important. Uh, in the future, we really want, try, would like to realize the uh, FTQC. Uh, but actually, we are now in this era, NISC era, okay? We have uh, like a 100, 100 of qubit with some errors. Actually, to, to realize FTQC, actually, it is said that we need uh, uh, millions of qubit, okay? Okay. So, actually, there's a big gap between the uh, um, uh, NISC and FTQC, you know? Uh, Without error correction, even though you have a, like a 10,000 qubit, you, can, you cannot do much things. Okay, you, of course you can do a parallel computation of NISC, but you know, the, uh, without error correction, error accumulates, so you cannot really uh, make use of the, like a 10,000 qubit without error correction. So, so we have been wondering whether we can find a good architecture for such a, what, the, what do we call RDFTQC error with the uh, qubit number of like uh, 10,000. So actually, the, um, we came up with, the, uh, with Osaka University, we came up with a new architecture. Actually, conventional architecture use the, uh, typically use this gate set, logical C0, logical S, logical H, logical T. But as you know, the, this logical T gate is very costly. You need a lot of gate operation, and a lot of gate, lot of gate operation, and a lot of qubit. And also the, uh, oh, sorry. And to react, actually, for the universal contact computation, you need uh, actually arbitrary rotation gate. So in this architecture, we typically repeat this logical eight and logical T to lead to the arbitrary rotation angles. And also, that means logical T gate is really costly, but also the, to realize the rotation gate, we really have to repeat that T gate again and again. That's why we really need a lot of the, uh, resource for the FTQC. So what we did is we decided to uh, use a kind of, uh, use the uh, new phase rotation gate, which is made from the actual physical rotation gate. So, so that means uh, this gate is not really collected by the, not really error corrected, but we decided to accept that error. It's a kind of trade-off. By accepting this gate, we can uh, reduce our resource a lot. So actually, details is written uh, in this paper, and the uh, details also explained by the, uh, my colleague, Sarubagia, uh, tomorrow afternoon, but anyway. And the result is, anyway, we can reduce the approximately one test in number of physical qubit and one twenty in the gate operation uh, with a slightly noisy logical phase rotation gate. And the, we also did the performance estimation of this architecture. Uh, we assume that like 10,000 qubit is available. With our newly, newly developed architecture, we can actually realize 64 logical qubit, okay? So uh, just with the 10,000 physical qubit. If we use a log, uh, conventional FD architecture, we cannot realize a, realize a lot of logical qubit. So this means with our new architecture, uh, maybe, kind of FTQC may be realized at the earlier, earlier, earlier than expected. So we try to push this architecture to realize the practical computing, quantum computing uh, in the near future, okay? Okay, and then, uh, uh, as I said, we really put emphasis on the software technology, and these are a list of publication in the quantum articles in the area recently, okay? And the, uh, actually this is my last slide. Uh, actually this is the uh, rough roadmap. Um, we just released, uh, this July we released the 40 qubit quantum simulator. And then uh, two months ago we released this 64 qubit quantum computer with weekend. And then we are planning to release uh, 256 qubit quantum computer in two years. And maybe more than uh, quantum computer with more than 1,000 qubit in three years or so. That's our plan. Okay, that's the end of my talk. And another thing I want to say is we're planning to have a special symposium on, in January in Delft. It, so if you are interested, please come to us by our physical booth. You may be able to register for this symposium. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.